Hey everyone, welcome to Nintendo Prime and hold on, um, doesn't quite match, doesn't feel right, here, that feels better. So, today we're going to be talking about EA, <laughs> and you know when EA is coming up, it's probably not going to end up being a super positive conversation, but it actually brings up a frustrating thing I want to talk about based on some recent news, so... You can kind of consider this maybe a bit more of a rant than a news video. In fact, I might label this as a discussion video instead of news, even though it's about a piece of news. And I'm going to try to be completely frank with you guys and honest about why I care about something like this. And it's going to come down to an initial conversation we're going to have about why I'm not upset that you guys don't know everything. I don't know everything either. But uh, before we get to that, hey, uh, editor. Yo, 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 editor. I, I don't know where Steve went. Dude, roll the intro. Roll. All right, now, before we get into the more serious parts of this video, I got to show you guys something. You see this? This is a Game Boy display that we are actually giving away right now. It has a retail value of about $300, which is pretty insane, but we're actually giving away, not this one, I actually have a second one still in the packaging here. Ah, yes. There's the uh, the good old packaging for you. Anyways, uh, you can go down into the pinned comment or description to enter, and yeah, the only real requirement is that I, I ask you to subscribe to the channel because it is a giveaway for our subscribers, but yeah, go go check out that link in the description of the pinned comment, and uh, it's really cool. I mean, you see that's Tetris. That's Tetris. This is an LCD board. This is where like the game cart would get plugged in. Pretty cool. I try not to blame people for the things that they don't know. Uh, it's not usually because people don't want to know. I mean, sometimes it is. But oftentimes there are things you wish you knew. Like you probably wish in the back of your mind right now you knew every single piece of Nintendo news, whether it was big or little, uh, right now. And I do actually know all the news that it currently exists out there. For example, I know there's some sort of Star Fox rumor out there. I just don't find the rumor to be credible, so we're not covering it. But I know about all the stories that exist out there because I make the time uh, to make myself knowledgeable. Unfortunately, not everyone has that time. That's why you rely on content creators and others to deliver the news to you because you just don't have the time to know what you would like to know all the time. And I understand it takes hours and hours of my day and people don't have that. They, they want it, you know, concise down into videos in smaller bits or in headlines. So I get it. And there's other times like, hey, you might want to know all of the history and lore of the Legend of Zelda franchise, but it requires you playing all the games, but not just playing all the games, reading manuals. It also requires you diving, diving into several books like Hyrule Historia, getting into the manga. There, There's a lot to dive into. And it's unrealistic for me to expect people to have all of that knowledge. And there are people that have more of it than I do. But it's unrealistic for me to expect it because we all have different lives and different circumstances that are going to determine how much time we can dedicate to these uh, things we would just like to know, but maybe don't. And I bring this up because one thing a lot of people on this channel don't know is that I actually really enjoy sports games, right? The Maddens of the world, the FIFAs of the world, the uh, you know the NHL hockey games of the world, the UFC fighting games, sometimes the occasional WWE game, although those haven't been good in a while. Uh, NBA 2K, I really enjoy these games. PGA Tour, like I I don't play all of them every year. I don't even play uh, most of them every year, but I really enjoy sports games. And part of this is because I'm a big sports fan. I I, I love the, watching NFL. I love playing football. I love watching basketball and playing basketball. I love. Uh, a lot of these sports, I played soccer or, you know, as it's called in the rest of the world, football. Like I, I played this, uh, stuff growing up and I really enjoy it. I, I still enjoy hitting the, hitting the golf course, uh, now and then as well. So these are things that I actively enjoy. And because I actively enjoy these aspects, it leads to me really enjoying virtualized simulation versions of those aspects and even the occasional arcade stuff like NFL Blitz or Tender Switch Sports or stuff like that. Like I, I end up enjoying those games quite a bit. Mario Strikers as an example. But what we go from that 
And I know a lot of people find these games to be, especially the simulation ones, to be kind of the scum of the earth because of yearly releases and price gouging. Well, we had an update on FIFA 23 Legacy Edition for Nintendo Switch. And this should be the last year that this particular brand can use the word FIFA because EA and FIFA don't have a contract beyond this year. So this is the last year. Like FIFA 23 is a thing coming out in September. Uh, but this is the last year we're going to see that branding. But here's the actual news. And I'm going to talk about why this is just extremely frustrating, even though it's not technically news. Right? So you can see we're over here on uh, Nintendo Everything. And I apologize that it's not completely centered here. But it says FIFA 23 Legacy Edition coming to Switch. EA will release in FIFA 23 Legacy Edition on Switch later this year. The company has confirmed. This marks the fourth consecutive year the Nintendo Switch console is receiving a Legacy Edition of the Sports Fries sports franchise i'm gonna actually argue it's six consecutive years but we'll get to that in a bit the game will have updates for kids clubs squads and commentary but not much else will be different just like last year and other years prior that means if you bought fifa on switch previously fifa 23 legacy edition will largely be the same ea is trying out some new features with fifa 23 this year such as the inclusion of a women's club teams for the first time with barclays women's super league and division one arkema which are at least confirmed for switch along with stadiums like Manchester City Academy. The title will also have the Men's FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 and FIFA's Women's World Cup Australia and New Zealand 2023 as post-launch updates, though those are unlikely for Nintendo's console. Crossplay features are planned as well, but when it comes to Switch, they will be unavailable. PS5, PS4, Xbox Series, Xbox One, and Stadia, a streaming platform, will now be shared FUT transfer market pool. However, EA says the Switch won't be included in that and will continue to operate independently. FIFA 23 Legacy Edition for Switch comes out on September 30th, 2022. Now, we're bringing this up because I am tired of specific companies, and, and, and today we'll, we'll focus on EA. Other companies are like this as well, but we'll focus on EA. Treating Nintendo platforms like they don't matter. Nintendo Switch is in a hundred and what, I guess officially 107, 108 million homes, although we're about to get sales updates on August or early August. So basically like a week or two, two weeks, I believe 10 days. I don't know. August 2nd, August 3rd, somewhere in there, we're about to get the update that's going to show that Nintendo Switch is probably over 110 million right now, and likely over 120 million by the end of this fiscal year, probably well over 120 million, if we're completely honest, maybe 130. But the point I'm trying to mention is that I am so tired of Nintendo Switch being treated as this platform that this sort of treatment's allowed. All FIFA 23 is is a roster update, right? Maybe there's a fresh coat of paint on the menu system, but otherwise, it's a roster update. And if we're honest, I know they didn't call FIFA a Legacy Edition all the way back in 2017, but it was. It was literally a two- to three-year-old version of FIFA from the Xbox 360, essentially. And they never bothered to really update it from there. They even pretended for a couple of years that this, it's FIFA for Switch, it's all the same thing, but it wasn't. It was never the same game. It was not even close. They did this, by the way, on Wii U, if you guys remember. Remember they, they touted that, that, that massive partnership between Nintendo and EA, and then one of the very first games we got was Madden that year on Wii U, which, by the way, Wii U that particular year was power parody with xbox 360 and playstation 3 the playstation 4 and xbox one didn't exist at that time so the year we got madden there was no power excuse reason to not to not have a parody version of madden and despite that what we got for madden back then i believe it was madden 13 what we got on switch was a four year old version of Madden. We couldn't even get the current version of Madden because reasons. It couldn't even use power as the excuse back then because it wasn't an excuse. They just were lazy and didn't care, which is ironic because some of the teams at EA did care. The Need for Speed port we ended up getting on uh, back then for, for the Wii U ended up actually being a really well done port. So there were some teams that cared. The sports teams weren't one of them. And EA on the whole has not exactly been a massive supporter of Nintendo Switch this entire time. We're six years in. Switch is the number one selling platform in the world. It's been the number one selling platform in the world 
almost since it came out. There's a couple years where PS4 was number one, but for the most part, Nintendo Switch has been the number one selling platform in the world for six consecutive years. And here we're sitting where we still can't get EA to properly support the platform. As an example, fine, you guys aren't going to care about the sports game so much. I get that. That's not a huge part of my audience. But what about It Takes Two? Why don't we have It Takes Two on Nintendo Switch? What's the reason? What's the reason we don't have that game on Switch? What's the reason EA doesn't deliver a majority of their games on Switch? Why don't we have The Sims? And I don't want to hear that The Sims doesn't make sense when we have 30 plus million in sales of Animal Crossing on Nintendo Switch. The Sims makes complete sense, and the current version of Sims isn't even new, it's older. There's no reason that we couldn't have that with a bunch of DLC on Nintendo Switch, except that EA just doesn't care. EA doesn't think they could sell games on Switch. And it's extremely unfortunate, but this isn't even... This isn't even surprising. Not just from EA, other companies. It's rare that we get companies like Bethesda and id Software willing to bring over on-parody ports of Doom and Wolfenstein. Like, those were amazing. When we got Mortal Kombat 11 an on-parody port with cross-platform, like, day one. It's so rare we get those ports. And I understand there is, um, let's just say, a point to be made that Switch is a significantly weaker platform, and it's much harder to get on-parody versions of games. I get that, and I understand that there will be sacrifices. I'm not even asking for things like Madden 23, or what is it? Yeah, it'd be 23 this year, come, to come to Nintendo Switch and actually have cross-platform play with the other platforms. No, that wouldn't make sense, because it probably wouldn't be able to run at 60 FPS, and so you shouldn't really have the cross-platform play in that case. Not that Madden really has cross-platform play. Anyways, that's a whole other thing with EA, which I don't know what the hell they're doing with some of these games. But... Why are you continuing to release FIFA and why are you continuing to charge full price for FIFA when it's a roster update every year? Why don't you just charge for an official, a $15 fee for an official roster update? Even then, no one should buy this game. If you want to play FIFA 23, go buy FIFA 19, which is the exact same damn game, and <clears throat> just go online and download one of the fan-made rosters for it because there's absolutely... No reason to buy the current one. I'm, I'm I'm just tired of the Switch being treated in this way when nothing really warrants it. We could talk about the power all we want, but shouldn't game sales matter more? And haven't we seen that high-quality ports to Nintendo Switch do well? Why do you think we got Doom Eternal? Because Doom 2016 was a high-quality port, and it did well. Now, some might be able to go, well, we got Witcher 3, but then we didn't get Cyberpunk. Well... When Cyberpunk's being taken out and refunded by PlayStation, I kind of think that, you know, it was probably the right decision to not, not worry about having Cyberpunk on Switch. But, you know, we're, I understand we're getting some games, you know, later. No Man's Sky is coming much later than it came on other platforms. Portal Collection much later than other platforms. I, I get all of that, but at least some of these companies are showing that they care. When Valve, who has the Steam Deck, is showing they care more about the Nintendo Switch and the potential sales despite having a competing platform than EA does, that to me is a problem. It's a, When Microsoft is allowing Cuphead and Ori that they own the publishing rights to to come to Nintendo Switch and PlayStation, but we can't get EA and other companies like them to properly support the Switch. There's no reason we don't have Grand Theft Auto V on Switch other than they just don't want to do it. Oh, we got the, the, the GTA Trilogy. That's great. You know what would have been easier? How about Grand Theft Auto V that was running on the Xbox 360? Oh, oh, they only care about the online mode. Okay, and the online originally also existed on the Xbox 360. I understand that maybe the current online couldn't work on the 360. Whatever. Whatever. You know what you also don't get? Any money by not bringing the game over at all. Maybe you could have sold a couple million copies. And you can't tell me that that's not worthwhile. That's not worthwhile to sell a couple million copies of GTA 5. I know people today, down in the comment section right now, that will probably say, yeah, man, if they brought GTA 5 over, hell, I'd even pay full price for it on Switch. Which is insane, considering this game came out not two generations ago. It's a really old game. But this is the way companies still treat Nintendo. Some of this is Nintendo's fault. 
They created Bad Blood with third parties back in the 90s, okay? Because they wouldn't let go of some of their draconian practices that were ensuring quality games, but also being a lit, little bit too controlling, a little bit too controlling. Things like Bayonetta could not exist on a Nintendo platform back then because Nintendo was too controlling. So they needed to let go of some of that grip, and they also needed to stop forcing these companies to give such a massive cut to Nintendo compared to other companies. It was insane. So Nintendo was a bit draconian. It was needed in the 80s because the industry needed order and needed structure. But then by the time the industry came around, they needed to relax and Nintendo did. So some of the bad relationships date back to them. But we are 20 years away from the 90s, 22 years away from the 90s, 23 if you want to actually get into 99. We don't need to be worrying about this as much anymore. I think that Nintendo has been trying to listen a little bit to third parties. And I know Nintendo is very in-focused, so that doesn't help. And I understand that companies don't think that they can compete in sales with Nintendo stuff. You know, why don't we have Call of Duty on Switch in any form? In any form. Forget, forget Modern Warfare 2. Why don't we have Call of Duty Mobile on Switch? Answer me that. It's very confusing that Switch, despite being the moneymaker that it is, the popular platform that it is, the platform that doesn't seem to be slow, well, it technically is slowing down, but isn't slowing down at a rate that people expected, can't get this support. And I don't think that more powerful hardware is the answer because when Nintendo had more powerful hardware with the GameCube and even the Wii U for that two-year period still wasn't getting that support. So FIFA 23 today had the same old news that FIFA's had for six straight years on Switch. So it's not really much of a news story to me. It's just a constant reminder that some companies treat Switch not even like a second-class platform, not even like a third-class platform, almost like the platform doesn't exist at all. And that just bothers me. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nintendo Robo Jams from Nintendo Prime. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.